So I'd like to now hand over to Tina, who's going to talk to us about the ESO project in Oxford City Council. Over to you, Tina. Great, thanks, Gordon. So I'm Tina. I'm the Oxford City Council lead for Energy Superhub Oxford, um, ESO for short. It's one of the three smart local energy um, system demonstration projects in the PIPA programme. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the project, but also mainly, I think, how it's provided ancillary benefits for the council and what sort of working with the private sector was like on such a large, high profile project. Next slide, please. So what was ESA? What is ESA? It's a £40 million project with £10 million worth of Innovate funding. It's a consortium of partners, private sector, research, education and public sector. Pivot Power with a lead as a private sector partner, now, now part of EDF. The main project outputs, um, which you can kind of see on the slide, but were grid balancing and energy storage of the high voltage grid via a 50 megawatt and 2 megawatt vanadium flow battery, um, integrated with a high voltage private wire, um, powerful EV charging hub on the end of that, a low carbon heating network via ground source heat pumps, and all of those things were managed by um, smart energy management systems. And the focus of all the projects that we've been working on is about evaluation and learning. So it's providing replica models to support net zero targets. And I'm really you know, pleased that in terms of what we've achieved in our project is that a lot of the technology in terms of the battery balancing, well, that's kind of well-known technology anyway, but um, some of the vanadium flow, the private wire, um, the EV hub on the end of it, the smart energy management systems are all being replicated elsewhere in the UK already. Next slide, please. So just to give you an overview of what it looks like, um, in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the battery. So that's at our National Grid substation in Oxford. Um, just above that is a ground source sort of heat pump um, storage unit, which would be in somebody's house. Um, and there's a sort of network, about 60 of those not far from where the um, batteries located, although they're not directly connected. And then the green line gives you the kind of private wire and that goes all the way down to the EV charging hub, which is um, directly connected to the high voltage network. There's 42 EV charging locations there. And so the top end of the innovation of the project are the world's first flow, um, flow battery and also the world's first and most powerful HV connected hub. And overall, the project will save 25,000 tonnes of CO2 by 2032. It should also have a significant impact on EV uptake and the university sort of estimated that it should increase uptake in Oxford by about 10 percent and hopefully give a big boost across Oxfordshire. Our latest car registrations in Oxfordshire actually show 49 percent of new car registrations are actually 49 percent battery electric vehicle, 27 percent are hybrid and actually only 23 were ICE and I believe at the last quarter the battery electric vehicle was 38. So hopefully we can start to see sort of um, some of the impact that it is having. Next slide, please. But as much as the really major outputs, which were the major delivery elements of the project, I also wanted to talk to you a little bit more about some of the side or some of the smaller outputs and some of the kind of benefits of those as well. Because they're just as important, really, and they go on to create sort of long lasting legacies as well. So we purchased 40 electric vehicles. Um, we bought chargers and charging infrastructure to match some of that being chargers at people's homes or staff homes and um, through doing that we learned a lot about our fleet a lot about e-migration and a lot about the technology and the data that you need for successful e-migration and due to that we've ended up purchasing a new telematic system so it enables us to get much better data about our fleet and we made it very we uh, we bought a system that actually gives us a lot of data about our electric vehicle fleet as well so the, there's kind of a lot of learning that comes as a side part of this project as well and um, we ended up migrating 26 hackney taxis to ev and one of the things we learned that was financial incentives were the biggest sort of enabling methodology to getting people to migrate over and in terms of the super hub, when we started out, we didn't have a defined methodology about how all the contracts or how that would work. We ended up with concession contracts with Fastnet, Tesla and a Spanish company called Winear. We are we are a little bit of income through those um, through those contracts. And then it kind of the whole hub grows as well. So we now have charging facilities. So we've got interest from a car club, um, other people who are looking for electric vehicle um, charging for their fleet come, are starting to come to us and talk to us about the opportunities to charge there. So the NHS needs some help at the moment. We've got a social enterprise cafe starting. We've had interest from people wanting to site um, Wi-Fi modules there. 
There's a massive need for freight consolidation and van charging around Oxford due to our zero emission zone. So all of these things start to grow and you end up with a much sort of larger, more expanded output of your initial project. Um, another main benefit, I think, from the ESO project, which again wasn't a direct output at the start, has been that we've managed to fund an EV strategy. And that's provided us with a really um, important mandate for the city and how we go on to and how we work um, or what our role is in terms of that sort of continued rollout. In terms of the private sector and the main partners on the project, they've also benefited quite significantly and many are now become market leaders in their fields, for example, have um, Habitat, Pivot Power and Kenza. Next slide, please. And then just talking about, I guess, what it's meant for us as a city and a council as well. So it's it's created a lot more knowledge and confidence um, at the heads of the council in terms of directors and buy-in from heads of service. That alongside the EV strategy has really, I think, cemented the work that we do and the importance of, uh, of decarbonisation of the transport sector. So we have permanent better paid staff. We had one permanent member of staff and two project related staff. We now have three permanent staff and two temporary staff. We've got a pipeline of projects and we can focus to more time and attention on getting things from feasibility into a much more of a business as usual and focus on income generation and what we can also do to support other local authorities, I think, in, in terms of the journey from what we've learned. Next slide, please. And just, you know, just to give you some examples of some of these things. So this is kind of taken from our EV strategy. Uh, it sort of explains why data and having a strategy is so important. So but you need the right systems and you need some funding to be able to achieve that. You know, so there's there's a, there's, a, there's criteria to have a bit of money, I think. But once you have data and you have a strategy in relation to that, then you've got that mandate and you understand what targets you need to achieve and you can get yourself a roadmap as, as to how you go forward with it. So those that's kind of yeah, it's just, it's just an indication of, of what you know what how this has helped us, I think. And then going on to the next slide, if, please. So this gives you an overall picture of our journey. So I sort of between 2016 and 18, we had got grant funding for other projects. We were doing pilots um, and feasibility projects. 2019 was a massively important year for us. We got the ESO project at the same time we had a citizens' climate assembly, and they sort of really cemented what we're doing and enabled us to move forward into sort of more business as usual. Nowadays, we've got a dedicated contract management facility for our charge point, for our charge point operators. We make sure that all the um, KPIs are met on a reliable basis and we have somebody managing that. We've got an EV specific framework, procurement framework that we've launched, which is a dynamic purchasing system and it's open to all local authorities and it supports them with buying and purchasing anything to do with EV, whether it's consultancy or infrastructure. Um, and we provide a sort of a mechanism of ensuring that the quality standards are met and complied to. So it gives you some more confidence and support. Um, the EV strategy is determined what infrastructure we need where, and it's also given us a mandate to find solutions with high priority groups such as working drivers and car clubs. And we're moving into a city sort of county wide approach to procurement, which is kind of a culmination of everything we've learned where we can make sure we achieve best value whilst we create contracts that sort of avoid local mon uh, monopolies and also ensure that employ that deployment is equitable and fair, which is kind of something that Jodie alluded to, which is a really important criteria for us. And then finally, or oh, last couple of slides, uh, next slide, please. But I'm working with the pri we're working with the private sector and the project I worked on was led by the private sector. I think it, the private sector is focused on making money and delivering solutions fast because that's what their, their main remit really is. And they do it really, really well. As long as they're a good company, they, they, they're going to do that really well. But they need us for our knowledge and understanding of the population and our drive to provide fairness and equi equitability. But we can learn a lot from them. I mean, I had a, you know, the project was hard. At times it was difficult, but we've learned a lot from them and they were really great partners in the whole. So it's been a very good experience from our perspective. I think what the public sector needs to do better at is accepting change and moving faster and then making sure that the challenges and the mechanism to making decisions are appropriate to the risk. We're often very risk averse um, organisations, but overall together we can make such a significant difference 
Uh, we just need to understand what each other's kind of limits are and constraints are and then make sure that we make the best of them to work together to deliver the outcome because together it's definitely going to be more efficient and effective and certainly going to get there faster. And then last slide, please. And then just to say that we have an open day, actually, um, which I think is on the 15th of May. And if anybody would like to come down and learn a little bit more about the ESO project and come and talk to us, meet some of the other partners, come and see the site, then um, you'll be more than welcome to come along. Um, and the details are on there. And yeah, just drop me a line if you're interested. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tina. Thank you very much for that. And uh, that, that event looks great. Uh, really interesting. So you know, we, we'll also share that in the post event uh, comms as well. Thanks, Tina. Thanks for getting through that rapidly.